Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Hashtag Clocked In with me, your host, Jordan Edwards. I'm thrilled to have you tune in as we dive into the dynamic world of productivity, success, and stories of incredible individuals who've mastered the art of getting things done. Whether you're commuting, hitting the gym, or just relaxing at home, this podcast is the go-to source for inspiration and actionable tips to level up your productivity game. I'm on a mission to unravel the secrets of those who seem to effortlessly manage their time and achieve their goals. So if you're ready to clock in and unlock your full potential, you're in the right place. We've got a lineup of amazing guests, industry experts, and thought leaders who will share their insights and strategies to help us crush your to-do list and make the most out of every moment. Get ready to get inspired, motivated, and equipped with the tools you need to supercharge your productivity. This is Hashtag Clocked In with Jordan Edwards. Let's dive in. Hey, what's going on, guys? we got a special guest today. We have Parker Olson. He's the founder of Forage. He's a psilocybin peer supporter. He's an Iron Man and a wine connoisseur level one. How are we doing today, Parker? Jordan, what's happening? I, f- I feel like we're friends at this point. So this is, this is going to be fun. <laughs> it really does feel that way. And it's crazy. It's been like three conversations. But Parker, where, where's your journey start, man? Where did, yeah. where did this all begin? Good, good question. Uh, man, where does the journey start? So yeah, and just a slight background. So, you know, what I'm working on right now, like the big project is is Forage. That's so F-O-R-I-J. And what we try and do is, is we get these different types of medicinal mushrooms. So mushrooms with like functional or, or medicinal value into everyday food. So like everyday snack format. So we have like a loose bag of granola. We do a meal replacement bar, but a lot of them are grounded around kind of like cutting edge, cutting edge research on basically like the supplementation of, of different mushrooms. Um, and that journey kind of goes back, um, goes probably back initially to high school when I uh, senior year, you know, was was kind of hanging out, had a lot of free blocks, but I I decided, you know what, I'll I will take a class that I think may be challenging and or interesting, and so I took this neuroscience course through MIT. Um, oh wow! Yeah, and I, you know, I, I was I'm I'm not the brightest bulb in the bunch, academically speaking, but I thought it would be cool, and uh, we spent the entire year looking at what different types of drugs do to the brain. So we went from like caffeine nicotine, cannabis, opioids, um, and then also psychedelic mushrooms specifically. And to me, that was like the first time that I like actually learned about psychedelic mushrooms specifically. And and to clarify, because I'm sure maybe some people are thinking this, none of our products have psychedelic mushrooms in them. That That's not what we sell. We sell legal mushrooms that have medicinal value and, and have been used as medicines in, in ancient or in Asia for quite literally thousands of years. But my journey starts kind of at, at, the, at the understanding of psychedelic mushrooms. So for me, it was the first time where I kind of was like, huh. Like what I had heard as a kid slash from my parents, I think is wrong. Um, (laughs) You know, like you hear all these negative things about psychedelics and how like you can go crazy. And, and when we learned about like the raw neuroscience and there was a ton of cutting edge research at the time was like, actually in a lot of ways, like they can be really medicinal for the brain and brain structures and neurochemistry. Um, And so that for me was kind of the beginning into my realm of, um, of mushrooms. And, and that's actually what launched me. I originally went to school. I was pre-med in neuroscience. Um, oh wow, that, yeah, that's cool. And the re- the really interesting thing is that when you brought up the different uh, assortment of drugs, quote unquote, yeah, you have caffeine and nicotine, yep. which most people displace. They go, dude, everyone does them every day. So like, why is that? I know matter? it's it's why it's why it's wild, man. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, caffeine is like the most abused drug on the planet. I think um, <laughs> some like stats about that. It's very much so a drug. Um, so it's yeah, very interesting. Um, and but yeah, that was kind of like an early time for me where I like learned something that was kind of on cutting edge research that I felt like a lot of people and resources have been telling me for years was was false or different. So I became really intrigued by neuroscience and like neurochemistry and kind of got into this like biohacking mentality, you know. And so, you know, quickly realized that in college that if I was going to major in neuroscience, I was going to be in school for the next quite literally like 15 years. And so I I decided I wasn't going to go become a neuroscientist or, or a doctor and ended up, you know, majoring in finance entrepreneurship, but I still majored in neuroscience. Um, and for me, that that was kind of the beginning um, and the passion was always there. And, you know, in a lot of my like casual reading, I'll, I'll read about neuroscience still. And even since college, which was, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago for me now, like 
a lot of the research has has shifted and evolved and and things that I were learning are now understood to be false, which is which is really cool because the field has been evolving. Um, but I moved to Seattle out of school, I'm going to management consulting, and I didn't know anyone and I want to get into weird Seattle stuff. And I found a pot an apothecary, which I thought was so weird. I thought that's quite literally where like witches hang out was at apothecaries. I didn't realize like they're still modern day apothecaries. So I go in and, you know, I'm like, what's the weird thing? I was like, I, I didn't say it that way, but I was like, what can I buy in here or take in here that like is so off the beaten path? And the worker was like, well, like we've got crystals. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And she's like, she's like, we're also doing this like adaptogen tonic class tonight. And I'm like, cool. I have no idea what that sounds like. Sign me up. I'll be there. Yeah. And I go and maybe some people have heard this buzzword of kind of adaptogens. And there are substances that help your body basically moderate stress and like adjust to um, oh, different, different stressors. Um, so stress physically, stress mentally. Um, and a lot of these medicinal and or functional mushrooms are adaptogens. So in this class, we learn what these are and they serve a tea. And I'm drinking the tea and I'm kind of like, man, this stuff is so voodoo-y. Like it's so witchcrafty, you know, like the woman starts off, she's doing a tongue reading. She like stick your tongue out. So it's like, uh... And she's looking at like the different things and she's like, well, your liver's inflamed and this and that. And I'm like, okay, like this is wild. Yeah. And about 15 minutes in, I kind of like had this sort of wave of like relaxation across my body where I recognized it and it felt like I had had like a muscle relaxant or something. And I felt very calm, like very energized, but very calm and like focused, like content. It almost describes it as like a Zen energy. And I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I don't know, like, did I like take I like consume drugs earlier. Like what is going on? Like I wasn't yeah. high, but I could notice a difference. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of minutes later, the woman who's leading the class is like, Hey, you know, if, you know, I don't know if anyone's feeling anything from this tea. Like this tea has, has reishi mushroom in it. And reishi is one of the adaptogens and it, and it's supposed to give like a really calming effect. Like a lot of people report to have like a calming effect from it. And, I'm I like, know, and you had no idea going into this? No idea. I, I had no idea. I literally thought it was like a sham. And for me, that moment, I still remember that moment. I was like, whoa, like there's something here. That That's pretty interesting. <clears throat> and, you know, just from like back of like learning about like all the powers and like really like cool things that psychedelics can do for the brain and mental health and addiction and, and post-traumatic stress disorder and learning that this was a mushroom and it was legal and it, and it, and it was being used medicinally globally but I'd never heard of it was really interesting for me. So that's where I like, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, I love the fact that one, you were open to a new experience that you're like, I have no idea what's going on here. Yeah. And, then, and then two, the really impressive thing, and most people don't do this, but a lot of people, uh, they'll end up getting into uh, their job and then they only focus on their job. And then they might go, oh, what did I watch for Netflix today? You're like, dude, I'm reading neuroscience on the weekends. And it's like, <laughs> it's because it's interesting, which you followed your intuition, which I think is really cool. I just want to give yeah. you a little praise for that. Thanks, dude. Yeah. And you have to, right. I don't know. I, I get like antsy if I like sit down for too long, you know, I'm, I'm that type of, that type of guy. So, so yeah, you know, then I started diving into the research. I was buying the, all sorts of different mushrooms and experimenting with them at home and making teas and you know, became pretty well adept at like the, a lot of the research that was going on about some of these mushrooms. So I'm sure some of your, you know, some of the listeners have heard of some of these mushrooms. It's like lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga. Um, let's, let's pretend that like, no, because I have no yeah. idea. I'm not familiar with this at all, which is why I find people like you very interesting. Cause I'm like, this is a whole new realm. Yeah. Like, Really, well, yeah, and I'll, I'll definitely touch on on some of them. Um, but the, these are a lot of the ones that are in this kind of like quote unquote medicinal category of mushrooms. They're all like legal. Turkey tail is another one. Turkey tail has really interesting anti cancer properties, and and like oh, right wow. now, right now today, in Japan, and I think like as of really recently, like a handful of other countries are using it as a um, as a cancer treatment. Oh wow. Um, yeah, and seeing really cool results. And and this is just a mushroom that actually grows really popularly in the US. I see it all the time. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I'm doing all this research. I joined the local mushroom foraging club. I ended up sitting on the board there for a couple of years. I got really into mushroom <laughs> foraging. And like some of some of these mushrooms, and I'll just give a quick overview because it, you know, it doesn't sound like you're super familiar, um, have like different qualities and, and different phytonutrients, you know, micronutrients that have different effects on the body. So uh, for example, chaga 
Uh, I think Chaga is called like the the king of mushrooms or something, but it's it's quite literally one of the most antioxidant dense um, substances on earth. Like the wow. like like the sheer number of antioxidants outnumbers I think almost any other um, like um, organism n- known known to man or like plant um, oh, wow. et cetera. Like it's a powerhouse. So like that's really an interesting um, mushroom. This turkey tail has anti-cancer properties. So it like quite literally is like fighting cancerous cells in the body. Um, lion's mane, which has become a really popular one, that, that's one that 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 we also focus on. Um, is I think like again like out of anything that has been studied. So think like plants, mushrooms. Um, I guess even like an, animal protein, whatever. Um, is the best synthesizer of a, a brain chemical called neurogrowth factor, NGF for short. Have you heard of neurogrowth factor? No. Okay, no, so you can think of neurogrowth factor as the thing that like your brain cells or neurons feed on to to quite literally grow, like neurogrowth oh, wow. factor, right? Neurogrowth yeah. factor. Um, and so it's present um, whenever there's growth going on and like is is required for growth. And so when you when you are consuming lion's mane, it's actually synthesizing neurogrowth factor and making it more available for your, for your neurons to grow and prune and like to develop stronger connections within your brain and your body, because there's neurons right all over your body. And that's how you control wow. your muscles. That's incredible. Um, and it's, 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 it's the number one synthesizer of neurogrowth factor, like known, like, like there is nothing else that synthesizes more, more neurogrowth factor, more efficiently in the body. Um, so that's super cool. Uh, Cordyceps is also kind of being put on the map, actually, as of recently. What, what's that? What's the new HBO show everyone's talking about? Which one? What it's do you like think about? about zombies or something? It, it's supposed to be the highest rated show on I, IMBD right now. It's based on a video game. Um, is it The Walking Dead? Or no. I feel like that one's outdated. Oh, it's The Last the, of Us. The Last, the Last of Us. That's it. <clears throat> the The show is based on this on this fungi. Right. So, so a mushroom is, is in the fungi um, yeah. kingdom that uh, like basically hijacks the human body and like takes it over. And, and like that's how you turn into a zombie in the show. But their cordyceps is this mushroom that I believe it's based on because it, it goes into and it hijacks insects like it, it will be find insect hosts. And it quite literally it takes over their brain on some level. And then it has them like crawl to the highest point and then it sprouts a mushroom out of their head. Oh, so wow. that way, when it sprouts the mushroom, it, uh, mushrooms really spores as eggs, like out of their caps or out, they release them in a lot of different ways. But by having the insect crawl to the highest point and then exploding the mushroom out of head and killing it, it's consuming all the nutrients, it's using it to create the mushroom. And then all its spores, its eggs are being released and then like going across like the forest floor because it's so high up. So they just get like dispersed. Wow. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I'll I could send you some photos after of like these insects with like blown up heads and there's like a little mushroom out of it. It's pretty wild. But cordyceps has been used, oh my God, for thousands of years. And like it's kind of its like biggest like famous use cases in the Tibetan mountains by er, like herbsmen or erd okay. herdsmen. Yeah. And they've been using it for like physical performance. Like they swear that like they supplement with this to basically be like hiking, you know, probably not hundreds of miles in a day, but like tens of miles in a day really effectively and then recover really quickly. And so they're able to like move around the mountains with these herds, herds. That, and what that, what that uh, mushroom does is it, is it basically is like, I think it's um, it like refuels your ATP cells or your ATP. So it, ATP, you can kind of think of as like the energy cell within okay. a cell. So it's sort of what powers a lot of cells. And so there's a lot of really interesting research where it's like supplementing with, with cordyceps, like the ATP levels in your blood are like, wildly more available and, and there's way more of it oh wow! Um, so, so that one's all about like energy and like physical performance and recovery um so yeah that's sort of just a broad handful of different mushrooms and, and kind of what they do and and you know what i've learned about and, and sort of really where we're focused so just entertain this so because i understand that mushrooms are becoming more mainstream mm-hmm. in the regard of from what i've heard people are like microdosing mushrooms is that Mm -hmm. is that a different approach or is this yeah so so psychedelic mushrooms are are working in like a completely different way it's okay it's it's a very different scientific different two different 
they're all under the mushroom category, but these are kind of like two different categories. Of mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good clarification. So, you know, I think a lot of people think that like there are maybe three categories of mushrooms, right? There's mushrooms that can kill you. There's mushrooms, you know, a lot of people are afraid of mushrooms. There's mushrooms that can get you high, like psychedelics. And then there's okay. like cremini mushrooms that you like put on a steak or something or cook on the okay. frying pan. The reality is like there, there is a fourth category that is referred to as functional and or medicinal mushrooms and that is between the like cremini mushroom and like the psychedelic mushroom right okay so i think of it as like edible mushrooms which is like cremini functional slash medicinal mushrooms which are all these mushrooms i just referenced lion's mane yeah. cordyceps chaga psychedelic mushrooms which is kind of on the way end of that spectrum of being like medicinal or having like these kind of intense effects and then all the like way down there are like deadly mushrooms oh, okay um, a lot more so I, and, I get it. okay and and the most interest or one of one of the really interesting things about the mushroom category is scientists pr- like are estimating that that we've only really discovered about seven percent of known of of mushroom species on earth which is oh, wild wow. Yeah. Wow. And so like, if there's already this understanding that like, wow, we've only discovered 7% and some of them can cure cancer and some of them can like help with post-traumatic stress disorder or addiction, right? Like psychedelics or some of these other ones can help like, like your brain cells grow. Like there is a lot of intrigue and, 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 you know, a lot more attention now on like, man, there could be really, really massive advances in probably specifically in, in medicines, like from maybe some mushrooms out there that we just haven't found or cultivated yet. Wow. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on. I, are you familiar with penicillin? Do you know? I know a little bit. No. Okay. So, so penicillin, right. It's like, it's like what made the U S win world war two, because it was basically like how it was, it was basically like preventing infection and wounds. Penicillin okay. is, is based on, uh, on my on, on fungi it's not a mushroom yeah. but it's fungi yeah mm-hmm. and like that is like arguably like one of the most earth-shattering medicines we know or, or have developed in the past century. yeah it's and it saved millions of lives that's incredible and it's mushroom based yeah <clears throat> so there's just so there's, like that world is so cool and there's a lot of people that are starting to learn about it and i think historically a lot of people have been afraid but now there's a lot more, you know, willingness and openness, right? No, absolutely. I mean, you're literally <laughs> talking to someone who's like, dude, I, I don't know. This seems a little crazy. And then like, you start to explain it and you're like, these are like superpowers that people can just get. And it, yeah. it's not, it's not something that you commonly think about. Like, Hey, did you pick this up? Or usually it's got to have the label like superfood or something mm-hmm. like no one's assuming these mushrooms are that. So like, ha- yeah. how did you, how did you get started then? obviously you're around this you're in the culture like. yeah it was just like i took it at the apothecary and then i just kept pulling on that string so it was like i was buying them i was supplementing with them i started in the, in seattle like mushroom foraging is we have some of the best mushroom foraging in the country so oh, it was wow. like oh cool i want to go mushroom foraging and so you know then now i go mushroom foraging and now you know i eat mushrooms and i pay attention to mushrooms and then i start forage and it's all about mushrooms and i feel like my life has become overcome with mushrooms you know and you know and then and then the psychedelic component is a whole other piece of it and you know you 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 read my like title earlier and in it i have like this psilocybin peer supporter title and that was like a certification i got just to have some more legitimacy but that's like you know a whole other realm of you know something i will do more on the side outside of forage is like i'll work with people who want to who want to try psychedelic mushrooms typically for the first time and want to do it with you know, make sure they're doing it safely, um, and appropriately. Um, and we'll actually work with people to go through those experiences. And and more specifically, I like to work with people who are interested in microdosing. I know you brought that up earlier. Um, but I think microdosing is just like a really good introduction into like the powers and, and, and a lot of the value that psychedelics can provide without like having some crazy experience, you know? So, so microdosing as defined is like, you're taking a dose that acts subconsciously so when you take these mushrooms you're not you're not like high you're not like out of your mind like you could microdose and like go to go to a board meeting or or, you know you know like oh wow dinner for your kids right and that's the idea is like it's like it's acting in this like kind of subconscious level but there are really cool studies like clinical studies that are done that show that like microdosing reduces depression and anxiety like clinical studies are done on it that's Um, incredible yeah so it really is very impressive. A lot of the, and it, it's funny because this is what one of my favorite parts about the podcast is that I find myself 
in these bubbles and like, we don't view ourselves and we don't always think about it, but like, there's a lot of the times, and this is why I think the podcast is so cool yeah. that you just, you cross paths with people that you're like, well, I'm in Tampa, Florida. I grew, I was hearing about it a little bit in Jersey. I have never been to Seattle before. And it's just like those, that whole mushroom culture, like, I haven't really seen it make its way to Tampa that much. I've heard about some of my friends from New York talking about it, but it's just a very, it's just interesting how the space is developing. And like, you were kind of at that, that epicenter. Like when you say Seattle is one of the top locations. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of mushroom activity and just like knowledge there. Um, And, and, you know, just, you know, shouting out like how your podcast got started. And I think why the concept is so cool. It's like, it was literally because you like, had a conversation with someone that was so different from me and you were like, damn, I'm just curious. And I yeah. just want to learn. And like, I think a lot of people like have moments like that where they're like, Whoa, I had no idea about that. And that seems to be like a thing. And again, it's like, everybody lives in their own bubble. Right. And, and, you know, just pulling back the reference to mushrooms, the oldest documented medicines are mushrooms, you know, and like, oh, wow. nobody I- knows that. Like, people think medicines like they're like mushrooms like what that's so random but the reality is it's like that the root of like where medicine literally came from are from mushrooms like quite that, literally. that's so interesting yeah that is so interesting so for you 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 start getting into your business where did it really take off where did you go this is going to become part of my life I mean, yeah, so I'm free and going into yeah, it. Yeah, so but. I started supplementing and doing this myself, and and there are some mushroom coffees out, and I just like don't love any of them. I don't think they're they're very good. Like to me, it's like I I like I like coffee, and I want to consume mushrooms in a way that's super convenient and like delicious and just like feels good. And so we set out to to basically get mushrooms into people's diets in a really seamless manner, um, and and in things that taste good. So we have like a loose bag of granola. We're launching a meal replacement bar actually like right now. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. And, and so the idea is like, okay, maybe people become curious about mushrooms, but like a lot of people don't know how to cook with mushrooms or like are afraid of them. And so how can you just like create something that's really seamless and frictionless to help them get them into their diet and, and, and feel the value and the benefits from them? So like we've had some customers who have, I've, I, and we don't market this because I, I think it would be inappropriate to do so, but like have, have literally emailed me and been like, hey, like I no longer take my Adderall medication because I Whoa. eat a product every day. Yeah. And it's not like we have a ton of those reviews, but I've gotten it twice. And I'm like, damn, like that, that's cool. Like that, that's really cool. And um, this is, this, it's funny because I literally uh, wrote on LinkedIn and I was thinking about this concept because I had a podcast earlier um, a few days before. And it was this concept of like, what is business really about? Like, are you chasing the dollar or are you chasing that impact? And like, I just want the audience to know that what you just said right there is the impact you're like we're Mm -hmm. trying to make it easier for mushrooms so if anyone's building a business this is the approach you want to start with the result and then move backwards and work towards that because it impacted your life in a positive way maybe it can help others and i think that's incredible thanks that's awesome that that i really don't feel like i'm financially incentivized you know of course like you have to like make a living um but yeah, yeah, so that's happened. We, we've had people who have have Parkinson's disease reach out and say like, hey, I feel like this product has helped diminish pain for me. Um, <clears throat> so there's there's all sorts of just like cool applications um, that are that are going on. And, you know, yeah, we're, we're kind of happy to happy to be helpful. And something something we recently did was we partnered with <clears throat> quite literally like the global leader in mushroom strain development. Oh, really? So when you think about strain development, all they're doing is like they're taking species of mushrooms and they're crossbreeding them and then okay. they're testing them for like bioavailable nutrients, like shelf stability, um, all sorts of different tests, right? And they're figuring out like how can they create strains that like the consumer can can eat and like get these, get these nutrients, get these vitamins really readily, like they're easy to produce. And so we um, are partnering with them and, and we use one of their proprietary vitamin D mushrooms. And so our, like our, our mushroom mix now, it has lion's mane, which like has all these awesome, like neurocognitive um, benefits, right. That are help helping the neurons and the brain cells grow. And it also has this vitamin D, which is the most bioavailable vitamin D you can consume. Oh, so yeah. So, so humans are more closely related to mushrooms than they are to plants. And so can 
consumption of mushrooms, like the nutrients within mushrooms are more easily accessible than the nutrients within plants, which is interesting. Um, so, I mean, so that's kind of like how we, we focused and like vitamin D has come out to be like this really pivotal vitamin um, for COVID, for cognitive health, like for inf- yeah, fighting inflammation. I mean, um, it comes it comes from the sun. It's kind of everything. <laughs> it's yeah, it comes from the sun. So, um, so yeah, yeah, we're kind of, you know, going down different avenues, exploring different pathways. We, you know, we just launched nationally in our first uh, retailer sprouts. So that's kind oh, of where awesome. you can find us in store. Yeah. It's been, it's been cool. That's incredible. And the really cool thing is that you've, and the thing I find interesting about you is that like, you're on such a leading ed with mushrooms, but you've also done like so many interesting things. You've done so much different stuff from like the Iron Man. Did, did I read this wrong that you did something with a like a van and a sailboat and you were like, <laughs> oh man, yeah. Well, so in part of building the business, I I lived out of this pop up camper van for a year, and it it's like a Japanese import. It's a 1995, like it's bare bones. There, the, the, there's no kitchen in there. There's no shower in there. There's no toilet in there. You hit a button and like the roof comes up, and then you crawl up the hole, and then you sleep on mm-hmm. out of this van. But yeah, I lived out of that for a year, driving around and sampling product at new grocery stores we were in, and you know, meeting with important people to help get our product in, in more places. Um, so that, yeah, I did that. That was more part of the, of the brand story for sure. I slept out of a tent for two years before that outside. So we could use my bedroom and I, and I lived in like a house with roommates, but we used my bedroom as our office. So like I had a couple interns at the time and they would like come over and like, we would just go into my room and there were desks and my bed was outside in the backyard Um, so those, those are just like funny things that I was doing, you know, with just to like help build the brand and just like stay scrappy and stay cash efficient. Um, because it's just, it's such a, it's such a cash intensive game and and the startup world is, is no joke, you know? So you kind of got to pull out all the stops if if you want to try and make it. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's so much more effective if you can keep costs low and, uh, interesting enough, I've actually done not not the van life. I did uh I did where we would go from Airbnb to Airbnb and live in cool. these different locations. But the really cool thing is no one realizes the proximity that you get to these different locations, right? So like yeah. what was that year like for you? Cause was it planned for a year or was it like, you know, we're gonna do um, a month and then we're gonna and then you're like, I really like this. There just wasn't an end. I just didn't un, un, I didn't know what was gonna happen after. And there was just it was the unknown. It was like, okay, I think I should go do this. So I'm going to go do it. I didn't think twice about it. Um, what year so was this? That was 2020 to 2021. I got off the Fantastic. road in in uh, July or August of 2021. So that was the best. Ago. That was the best time to do it because everything was shut down. So people weren't even traveling. And it's like, yeah, I'm here, man. I'm here for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I looped the US like one and a half times. I saw a lot of cool places. You know, there were some sketchy scenarios. I slept in like two degree weather outside of Chicago and like all the pride frost inside of the entire van was freezing. Like, oh my, yeah, they're real. I, I had a homeless person try and break in once. <laughs> I bought a taser after that, thank, thankfully. Almost got yeah. arrested a couple times. Like, because, you know, like people like sleeping in a van was, you know, I think it's become more commonplace, but it's somewhat taboo. Um, Absolutely. So, so, so where do you think you had that uh, understanding and like intuition to go, hey, man, this is like really something I want to build and I'm willing to sleep outside and attempt for two years? Yeah. Or- so, yeah, yeah. Good question. You kind of asked earlier and I, I don't think we, we totally got there of like, you know, how did you know that like this was maybe going to work or, or to kind of move forward with this? So I, I was, you know, I was putting these mushroom supplements into my own food products. And this is while I was training for the Ironman. I was trying to like really dial in my nutrition and um, I, a little bit of backstory back in 2018, I spent 18 months where every single month I tried a different nutritional diet Okay. and like, and like was documenting how I felt. And one of the months I supplemented with, with these mushrooms. And that was the month that I felt best wow. and that solidified the blow. Like, whoa, like mushrooms, there's something here. Like there's something really big here. And, um, I started kind of putting it like in an oatmeal and was eating it every single day. And then randomly like a friend just hit me up and was like hey i'm going to the startup conference you should come i've got super cheap tickets it'd just be good to see you he lives in new york we were gonna meet in oakland so we went and you know everybody at these startup conferences have, have you been to a startup conference before like like this uh you describe it because okay, i've been yeah. a couple different conferences so i'm interested yeah. 
this one but everyone's like, like you know like oh like what do you what do you do like what do you work on it's a very like what's your project like what's your startup like oh uh, yeah are you and I like wasn't like really working on anything. I was kind of like just digging into this mushroom thing. And so finally, I I kind of lied. I was like, I'm building the first like like mushroom based like food products get these mushrooms into people's diets. And like <laughs> eight out of ten people looked at me and were kind of just like, "You're a weird Seattle hippie," you know. <laughs> that was sort of the like initial response that I got. But there was an angel investor who I told that to, and he was like, "Oh, he's like, you're onto this trend like before anybody else." else like i need to go introduce you to someone and so he brings me up and, and introduces me to a man named sam parr who put on the startup event he's he's kind of like pretty big in the startup world yeah and it was i'll never forget this moment he's like oh yeah i got it i mean i'm gonna introduce you to sam and i'm like oh like really and he's like yeah like sam is gonna think this is dope he's like really all in on mushrooms thinks it's gonna be the next the next big thing and so we're walking up to sam and there's like 15 people at the conference who are all standing around sam like trying to get their question in like kind of suckling at his like suckling at his nip and this guy walks in he's like hey sam he like cuts off everybody and sam's like hey and then he's like you need to talk to this kid parker and like everybody there just like immediately like looks at me and is like damn like 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 it was just this like i got like front stage center to like pitch him like kind of just like made up this pitch on the spot and he was like that's dope like here's my card and everybody there was like you could tell was like trying to get his card and yeah. he's like yeah like, draw me an email like that's sick you should send me your, your pitch deck he's like he's like these are the things i invest in and so that i literally went home like went on to fiverr like hired somebody to make a logo like and started trying to sell the product and like that for me was like the moment where i was like okay this is somewhat real and i got i, I got to chase I this no, but I think that is so incredible because that's the stories that people need to hear because here's the thing. There's uh, a lot of times where everyone's like, you got to prepare, you got to prepare, you got to prepare. And uh, half the time it's, no, you just got to show up and do something. And if someone's willing to pay you or someone's willing to invest, you're like, all right, I'll do the work now. <laughs> like like right. to do all the work prior is much more difficult than in that organic situation when you're like, this is my thing. They're yeah. like, what is your thing? <laughs> Yeah, literally, you just you kind of fake it till you make it. Like you, you, I there's a guy I work with who, he's our manufacturing partner, but he likes to say he's like, yeah, like we we sell all these things, and then once somebody buys, we backpedal and make it happen. And I'm like, I like that, you know, like that's well, in a lot of ways you're just like testing a lot of things, and you're like, oh, what sticks? Like where is there a thread that there seems to be traction and interest, and then keep pulling on that thread, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's the only model that can work because you're not going to keep putting all of your money and going like, yeah, let's gamble on this. You're going to be like mm -hmm. sprouts. You want this. Okay. Give me a little yeah. time. I can get this. And yeah, I think that's a misconception yeah. where it's like, you want this to occur. And it's like, no, it's whatever occurs happens. It's going to be in this field, but we're working towards this mission. And I think that's a cool idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so there's there's this metaphor that I really like, you know, that I think talks well to planning for a startup or sort of just figuring it out where like, you know, you imagine you're in like a, a large open dark room and there's a button on a wall somewhere that you have to press and, and that's success or that's how you win. And so I think a lot of people like to sit and say, okay, like, you know, here's we think is the size of the room. So we're going to go this direction and then that direction and five steps this way. And then we're going to take a left and then we're going to go straight and then we're going to hit the button. And then, you know, they take a step forward and they hit an obstacle and then their whole fucking plan that they just spent 45 minutes, an hour coming up with is, is gone to shit versus like you take a step forward. Is there an obstacle? Is, you know, what information did you just learn with that step forward? And then how is that going to inform your second step? Are you going to go backwards and then take a step in a different direction? Are you going to take a right? Are you going to keep going straight? And, and you start to feel it out until you start to build that mental model in that world, that, that understanding and you say, okay, now that I have some information, now I can start to build more of a plan or, or, or start to be more strategic. But I think a lot of people up front want to have figure out all the strategy, figure out the plan, all the go to market. And it's it's a good idea to, to understand it and to have a general plan. But the reality is it's is it's not going to work. And so yeah. you know, you continue to gather information and reassess and gather information and reassess and gather information and reassess and continue to build the real understanding of what is happening around you and what is the environment and, and, and how do you survive and how do you thrive versus planning for it all and making all these assumptions and building this model. And it just real world, the real life just doesn't work that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 
when I think of that, I think of a, it's like in touch with reality. Like yeah. the more in touch with reality, the better you can do. And the really important thing that Parker just mentioned that I hope everyone caught is that he said he reassesses constantly. Yeah. And if you're not doing that, then you're just going to miss six months and miss that new trend or miss that thing or miss that that post didn't do well or miss that that sale didn't happen because maybe you missed the point of what was going on. So you right. constantly have to reassess because the more you reassess, the more you can see gains or drops. It's super important. Yeah. Versus just, Hey, this is the plan. We're sticking to it. You know? Okay. It's good to have a plan to have a first step, but once, yeah. once you take that first step, it's, let's reassess. Yeah, absolutely. So. It's massive. It's massive. And I, I wouldn't, I, I have to hop into it. Uh, you mentioned the Ironman a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran several marathons, but an Ironman is like really, it, it's the 26.2, the 112 bike. Yeah. And then what, what's the swim? It's 2.4. Two. It's a big endeavor. Like <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of people, yeah. that's a big endeavor. Yeah, what was I, that training like? And what yeah, was that yeah. process for you? I just signed up because I was trying to make friends in Seattle and they were like, Hey, let's do a half Ironman. And we signed up and then the half Ironman got canceled because of COVID. And then we deferred to do a full. And like, yeah. I dude, I hadn't biked more than 10 miles in my life. I hadn't ran more than probably eight or nine and hadn't swam more than 500 meters. And it was like, Oh fuck. Like you better figure this out because it's also kind of expensive. So you're like, I'm not going to show up and embarrass myself and or die. Like yeah. so I'm going to take this one seriously. And my biggest takeaway, and, and honestly, it's been so helpful for me to go through that on like for my entrepreneurial journey is like, you're so much stronger than you think you are on every level. Like, and like, if you put in the time, and your discipline, like you can really make anything happen. Like if you fail, like it's probably a matter of like you weren't disciplined and, and you didn't put in the time and you weren't, you know, and you weren't training on whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, I, it was like, it was a pretty transformative six months to me. Like we, it was a six month training plan, six days, six days of training, one day of rest. Three of those days are two of day are two days. So like you're biking and you're swimming or you're running and you're swimming or whatever. Um, and the actual race day, it was 105 out. It was, we, they almost canceled the race because of, because they were concerned about people dying on the course. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people dropped out because of heat stroke. Um, and it was like pretty intimidating. You were like, oh my God, like, are we about to do this? And it's like, we're going to be 105 out today. Um, the reality is, man, I had a blast during the race. Like, I just like stayed, stayed stayed focused the entire time it's like i you know we could get into all like heart rate zone training and what heart rate your 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 body can sustain for that amount of time you know proper fueling so uh salts electrolytes carbs hydration and if you're dialed and you stay focused like the reality is the race was the easiest part like the getting up every single day and having to plan the, the workout and having to be like uh, have a, like a looming 100 mile bike ride on a saturday when on like Thursday, you're super tired and sore and you're like, oh my God, like I'm going to go bike a hundred on Saturday. Like, are you kidding me? That, that's the real challenge. Like that was, was the real, the just the real kick, you know? But once you get to the game day, game day was, game day was a blast. We had a really good time. Yeah. I, I appreciate you mentioning that because it, it's so interesting. I was talking about this in regards to like a new year's plan or a new year's goal or whatever people bring up. And I was saying how some people might say that their goal is to run a marathon or do an Ironman. And I'm like, that's not really their goal. Like that might, that might be the objective, but yeah. what's really occurring is you're about to run probably 150, 200 miles just to get your legs under you so that you have the capability of running 26.2. Cause what they don't talk about is that you train 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 20, you're, you're doing all this weeks before months before and mm -hmm. that's where the real work is so parker i'm glad you said that because most people are like yeah that moment was so incredible and it's like no it was the progress it was the yeah it was it was, it was the entire element of it which is so yeah important. the race was all gravy like we got to the race and it was like all right i know i'm gonna finish the race like i, I have <laughs> i've put in the time and like that was it was honestly just a blast that's so much fun we're we're doing another one in may oh wow and we have a group of like 25. It's going to be a blast. Oh my, oh my God. God. That's so much group. fun. There's a lot of competition. Like it's heating up. It's just so much fun to train. And like you show up and it, and it becomes very clear very quickly, like who's been training and like taking it seriously, you know? 
Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, that's incredible. Where are you doing it? In uh, um, St. George, Utah. Okay. Oh, that's beautiful. That's like Zion area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really close to Zion. It's it's a pretty monster course. Lots of hills. The run is is kind of gnarly. But the I'm altitude too. To yeah, They're not yeah, yeah that's around. true. Yeah, I, I haven't thought about the altitude. That's something I'm gonna have to uh, accommodate for. I did a uh, I did the Lake Tahoe. I know we're winding down. I did the Lake Tahoe one in 2019, and I was training in Tampa. Two Tampa's literally zero. Lake Tahoe six thousand. So yeah. I literally bought one of these altitude masks, and I looked like no. Bane. Yeah, dude, you get truth, them at, let like, me let me let me buy that off you. Are you still using it, dude? They're literally low. Pro- you can literally get them at like a sporting goods place for like fifty really? bucks, and they're like a Bane mask, and then you oh, can like sick. adjust it, and it's like less altitude. I would run like, dude. I ran like the most I ran on with it was like five miles because I'm like, dude, I can't even breathe with this thing. Incredible. Just I'm, cut off your oxygen. I'm gonna look this up right after this call and buy one. I would definitely it, get one of those. Uh, oh, but Parker, yes. where can people hear more about forage? Where can they uh, hear more about mushrooms? Where can they hear more about you? Yeah, um, we have a we have a like a really great blog. We're, we're kind of one of the leading online authorities on on the lion's mane mushroom specifically right now. So we have tons of resources on our blog. Like I think about fifty thousand unique users a month come visit our blog and read about lion's mane we're we're the we're the top ranked search result on google for 180 lion's mane terms so if you're interested like that's a good place to start um i'm really active on linkedin i talk a lot more about like just the journey and forage building um you know all of our products are available online we're about to drop this meal replacement bar um and then we're 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 available nationally on sprouts or if you go to our website you can kind of see where our products are available so yeah we'd love to you know come check us out if, if you love our products tell me about it if you hate it tell me about it um it's just nice to like meet people like you George, process and other people listening you know i've been on prior podcasts and people will go out and buy the product and message me about it and that's cool and then you know we become friends and then when i'm driving around the country i've like met up with a bunch of these random people that we just kind of like met randomly through some sort of connection like this so it's always cool for me. That's always the like, that's like what it's about. It's just like meeting people and building connections and just like, you just, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I think that's one of the coolest things about having a large reaching uh, business podcast, anything, your network's constantly expanding and it starts virtually and then it becomes in person and you're like, yeah. Oh, dude, you're here. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. This Let's cool. kick it. <laughs> Absolutely. Parker, this has been fantastic. I wish you guys the best of luck. And, uh, I actually, funny enough, my girlfriend really got into sprouts recently. So we're probably going to go cool. pick up some of this. Yeah. Hook it up. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Send me a photo. Absolutely. We'll do Parker. I appreciate it, man. This is awesome. Hi brother. See ya. Thank you for reaching the end of the podcast for that. We'll give you a complimentary coaching session in the link below with Edwards Consulting. Hope to see you there and have a great day and keep clocking in.